Okay, so if you made it this far, you know what? You go ahead and give yourself a little pat on the back. You deserve it. Uh, but I think that also means you're ready to move on to part two, and we are going to kick it up a notch. Uh, so far, we've reviewed many of the fundamentals, but you're probably still in this position where you're not sure how to put it all together. How do we actually build a website using Vue? Well, that's what part two is for. So why don't we get started with Vite? If you're working along, visit vitejs.dev. And if you're curious about that word, it's simply French for the word quick. Vite is a build tool that takes care of our server, uh, hot reloading, which basically means when I change text within a file, the browser instantly updates to reflect that change. And it also includes a build tool that will bundle up all of our code to make it as performant as possible. All right, let's give this a shot. So I'm going to visit my code directory. In your case, just go to wherever you store your websites. And I'm going to run npm init view, and I want the latest version. Now it's going to ask us some questions. Uh, the project name, why don't we say my first view project? All right, do we want TypeScript? No. JSX, no, we're not going to worry about that. Do we want a router? Yes, we do. And I'll use the arrow keys for this. Next, do we need help with state management? Well, eventually, yes. But for now, let's keep it simple. And then finally, testing, we're going to skip that. Cypress is an amazing end-to-end -end testing framework, but again, we're going to skip all of that. But I will pull in ESLint to help out with code quality, as well as prettier for code formatting. All right. So now it's asking us to run these commands. I will select that and paste it in. All right, here we go. So you can see I have v version 2.9 installed, and we have a dev server running at localhost 3000. We've now successfully created a project with Vit and Vue 3. Let's have a look at the code base. In a new tab, I will cd into my first Vue project and open this in my editor of choice. OK, so immediately I see a bunch of files here. Now, I will warn you, it's always a little overwhelming when you're introduced to a framework. You see a bunch of directories, a bunch of files, and you're not sure what any of them do. And yeah, you, you immediately kind of feel disheartened, like, here's something else I have to learn. Just stick with it, though. Many of the things we've already learned are represented here. So you'll feel right at home pretty quickly. Let's first go into index.html. And you can see, yeah, we did something just like this in our project. It imports a main.js file, and it declares it as a module. All right, there's main.js. And yeah, we can recognize some of this. Notice we are importing create app from Vue. Before, we imported Vue globally, and we just did something like this, where we said app. But it's the same thing, OK? All right, next you can see it's importing an app file, and it's passing it to create app. Now, you'll remember when we were first learning, we did everything inline. But then later, we extracted it to a file. And the same is true here. OK, so it's importing this file. And it looks like this is our root component. Have a look. We have a header here with the view logo and then a message that says you did it. All right, let's see if we can find that in the browser. There we go. We have a header with a message that says you did it. OK, so check this out. If I tweak this file, it will instantly be represented on the page without requiring a reload. And this is referred to as hot module replacement. So I delete that, and notice the image is now gone. In fact, let's delete the entire header. I'll save it. It recompiles and updates the browser. But let's bring that back real quick. If I now return to main.js, the only other thing you're not familiar with is this router. So if I showed you just this, I think you'd see, oh, yeah, I I'm very familiar with this. We use view create app to build our app. We pass in our root component, and then we mount it to the page. And if we have a look at index.html, there it is. So all of that is super familiar to you, hopefully. The only thing you're not familiar with is view router. So we use view router by importing it, and then we say app.use router. Now, view router is a first party tool that's going to help us out when it comes to defining our routes. Uh, creating our links, um, history management, scroll position, uh, memory, all of that stuff comes out of the box. And we can see if I open up this router directory, here it is. And uh, granted, this looks a little confusing, but the bread and butter is right here. This is where we can define an array of all of the routes or all of the pages that we want to respond to. So notice for the home page, and you know what? I always like to keep things as simple as possible when I'm learning. So let's keep it just like this. 
Okay, so now our application responds to a single route. If you visit this URI, or the home page, we are going to load a component called home view. And you can see we are loading the home view from this path. Okay, so think of it like this. When you're building a traditional server-side application, you're always going to have a view, some kind of block of HTML that responds to every URI. So for example, if I'm building a static website, if I visit slash about in the browser, then there's probably something like an about.html file that returns the HTML. Uh, or if I'm building a Laravel app and I visit slash contact, well, there's probably gonna be something like a contact.blade.php file that has all of the data and the form. And the same is going to be true when we're building a single page application. So if the user visits the home page, we need some kind of HTML to render, and that will be stored in the views directory. And notice real quick this convention where page specific view components have the suffix view, and they are stored in a views directory rather than a general components directory. Very, very common. Now, if we have a look at this, it does feel a little foreign. This isn't quite what we've been reviewing in previous episodes. In previous episodes, we had things like this, where we exported an object, where we declared the template, right? But now we have multiple tags here. I have a script tag, I have a template tag, I can even have a style tag. And also on that note, notice that the file extension is .view rather than .js. Okay. .view is a file type that we refer to as single file component. It is a single file that contains your script, its respective template, and any optional styling that should go along with it. It's really cool, I think you're gonna love it, and in fact, I exclusively use single file components. All you really need to note though, is whereas in the past you would export an object where you create the template, well now that template can be stored outside of the script tag. So if we just had something like this, hello world, like that, this would still work. We come back, give it a refresh, and now you have your component. And of course you can inspect it like usual. So if we have a look here, I'm gonna click on this little icon, and this lets me hover over the browser to select any view components it finds. So here's our app component, and there is our home view. Okay, so let's do this to wrap up. I'm gonna bring it back to what we had before. Uh, I fully expect this to be somewhat confusing. We're introducing a bunch of new concepts here, even things like this, where we're using camel casing instead of things like the welcome. Well, you can actually do both, but, but nonetheless, these are all little changes that can be a bit overwhelming. So I think you should fully expect that. And don't worry, you're gonna figure it out, I promise. But why don't we finish up the episode by just figuring out how we can add another page? And hopefully that'll get you a little excited. Right now we have a home page and an about page, but notice that's blank. That's because I cleared out the router. So let's bring it back. All right, a home page and about page. Let's do one more. So let's, uh, let's do this. I will take about view, I'll duplicate it, and I'm gonna call it contact view. And this will be the contact page. And we'll update this as well. All right, so I have my component here, but it's not like we can visit that page yet. So for example, if I go to contact, yeah, that's not gonna work. And in fact, to notice if I open up the console, no match found for location with path contact. All right, let's set up a route. So we go into our router and we'll do another one right here. If you visit slash contact, we'll give it a name of contact and that should load a component called contact view. All right, let's import that up here like so. Now, if I come back, there we go, it works. Okay, so now the only remaining step is to create a link to that contact page. Let's do that now. We'll go into app.view, and here's our navigation for the entire site. And notice we have these router links, and that's pulled in right here. And again, think of this sort of like an anchor tag on steroids. Of course, ultimately, it's going to render an anchor tag, but yes, of course, it has extra behavior to respond, to deal with history, to deal with um, potential scroll management, a bunch of things like that. So I'm gonna add a new one here, and that will link us to slash contact. All right, so let's switch back, and there we go. We have the contact page, contact, about, home, and it's blazing fast.
Okay, so admittedly, you should feel a little overwhelmed at this point. So, so if you do, trust me, that's par for the course. Just work along and play around with it. Work through the editor and see what each file does. Tweak things, see how that uh, affects what's loaded in the browser. And when you're ready, let's move on to the next episode. Oh, and don't forget, if you have any questions along the way, please do ask in the comments below, and one of us will try to help out. Okay, onward to the next episode.